35 Storm Team Meteorologist Brooks Garner joins me now. And uh, Brooks, keeping a close eye on the, uh, our beaches here in Florida because of the uh, impacts yes. of Aaron. Absolutely. Garrett, this hurricane is going to pass the better part of the 1,000 miles away from us, so we won't have any direct impacts, but we are already feeling the wave action waves between 4 and 5 feet at this midday hour, and they'll generally continue to build through the day, especially as we head into tonight and tomorrow. Aaron right now is kind of hiding behind the shadow, if you will, of the Bahamas, but once it achieves a farther north latitude and it's no longer being blocked by those islands, we'll have a direct shot from the center of the hurricane as far as the wave action goes, and we could easily see these wave heights double, which means that the rip current risk is going to go up even further. Right now, the rip current risk is quite high. You can see a lot of folks in the beach there, knee deep water. It's recommended you stay out of the water as a swimmer and only experienced surfers should go in. We've got a very high risk for deadly rip currents. It's the real deal. This is very, very big water. Waves of three to seven feet with building surf. Water's pretty warm, 86 degree water, by the way, just as a side note. But here's the latest on Aaron. Right now, it is weakened thanks to the intrusion of dry air into its northwest quadrant. That's brought it down to a Category 2 hurricane. Winds much lower now than they have been, certainly, in the Hurricane Hunter Recon, where they fly into it, has found even weaker winds. So the bottom line is that over the next day or so, it'll stay on the weaker side, still a hurricane and still a strong one, but where you see those yellow colorations, that's dry air being pulled in. Now, the official forecast for the National Hurricane Center is that this will re-intensify as it emerges from the Bahamas, find some slightly more favorable atmospheric conditions, and yet again become a major hurricane, a Category 3, as it passes the latitude, the horizontal line of, uh, on the map there around Jacksonville. And that will be the straight shot I was talking about where the waves come directly from the hurricane and when our rip current risk and also our coastal erosion potential will be highest at times of high tide. The wind field of the system will also be expanding. And so we're going to see the, the wind reaching potentially the coast here, like around the Carolinas, Outer Banks of North Carolina, all the way up into the Delmarva Peninsula. That's why it's highlighted in yellow. That's a tropical storm watch. We may even see some of the wind working into southern New England before finally the system moves out to sea, losing its tropical characteristics. But as far as Florida's concerned, the main impacts will be the wave action. And that'll really be the case for much of the U.S. East Coast. Four to seven foot waves today, eight to 12 foot waves tomorrow. You know, some of the beaches may even be closed if the lifeguards determine it's simply too dangerous for swimmers to go out there. All right, let's look at the tropical wind forecast. This does a great job of showing that expanding wind field and the resultant tropical storm force winds reaching the outer banks of North Carolina. And in some places, they've already evacuated because they're saying, you know, if you've ever been to the Outer Banks, it's, there's a little highway called Highway 12, and there's literally like 100 feet of sand on both sides. And so they're really worried about overwash and, and maybe this thing even cutting a whole new pass. And so there wouldn't be a way to get people in and out of there if there's an emergency, so they've asked people to evacuate. Anyway, those winds are going to continue there and finally work through southern New England before departing into the North Atlantic and losing its tropical characteristics on Saturday. Another feature with this system is that it's going to bring in dry air at the mid and upper levels for Florida later today into tomorrow. And what that means is our overall thunderstorm chance will be lower. It's not going to be like a break in the mugginess when you step outside, but at least the thunderstorm coverage won't be quite as extensive. And when it rains, it may not rain quite as hard. But that's a temporary effect because as the system moves out, our rain chances go up and our atmospheric moisture will return for this weekend for more thunderstorms. But look for about a 30 to 40% chance this afternoon. Elsewhere in the tropics, we have to watch out for two tropical waves. You can see that orange X in the middle of your screen as well as the yellow X. Both have potential to develop. The National Hurricane Center is saying that the middle one, the one in the middle of the tropical Atlantic, has a, a medium chance of developing, about a 60% chance as it continues to trek westward into the western Atlantic, and the wave coming off of Africa, a 30% chance. Models are, are all over the place, but the bottom line is because these are forming a little bit farther south than Aaron did, we're going to have to watch for a potential track in the next week and a half to two weeks toward the Caribbean and maybe toward the southeast. Well, the cameras right now are featuring sunny conditions and beautiful weather. As far as the afternoon goes, we'll have a flow from the northeast. It'll be breezy today, and we'll see some scattered thunderstorms around between 3 and 5 o'clock, but most of the action after commute time, around dinner time, transitioning west toward the Tampa Bay region and I-75. So again, 30 to 40% chance of rain today. And a seven-day forecast around the Orlando metro region, featuring pretty typical temperatures for this time of year. Our average high, 92, and we'll be within a degree or two of that. Uh, throughout the seven day forecast. 30% chance of rain today and tomorrow, and back to a 60% chance of rain Thursday, right on through early next week. So, Garrett, you know the phrase dodging a bullet. With Aaron, this is like dodging a cannonball. Problem is, we got more of them back into the eastern Atlantic, so we can't let our guard down. The peak of the hurricane season is September 10th, and so we got to be 
quite weary of what is going on out there in the open waters. Yeah, still uh, still a lot, a long way to go. Still a lot to yes. watch. Fox 35 Storm Team Meteorologist yeah. Brooks Garner, I really appreciate you joining us. Thank you, Garrett. My, my pleasure. And here's a live look at uh, Daytona Beach from our Hard Rock Hotel camera. You can see those rough waves, that uh, tough surf that uh, Brooks was talking about. We know it is creating, uh, Hurricane Aaron is creating those rough waves along the shores of Central Florida. Uh, lifeguards are already having to pull people out of the rough surf. Um, it's dangerous uh, for beachgoers in the water, especially if you're not a strong swimmer. Again, this is a live look in Volusia County. Fox 35's Marley Capper was in Brevard County earlier today talking with uh, officials about how they're dealing with the conditions there. It's definitely scary, and I think that's why uh, officials are advising people just don't get in the water right now. Uh, it's not the time to learn how to surf. Some of these waves are huge, even for the most seasoned surfers. And so that's the advice that I've been hearing from officials. I'd love to introduce you to the Ocean Rescue Chief here. This is Eisen Witcher. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing great. Awesome. Well, thanks for having us. I appreciate your time. So yesterday we saw a 50 year old who was boogie boarding and had to be rescued because the surf was just too um, powerful for him. He ended up having some traumatic injuries. Um, last night he was still in the hospital. We don't quite know the extent of the injuries, so we can't talk about that. But when you hear these stories, what is your advice for people who are wanting to get in the water or maybe trying to surf or boogie board for the first time? And these waves are just really powerful. Uh, with the storm out in the Atlantic right now, this may not be the best time for uh, new surfers to go out into the water. So we're uh, urging people to be on the side of caution and uh, just be careful out there. Definitely. Um, what piece of advice do you have for um, even the season, most seasoned surfers? If people get caught in a rip current, uh, what would you tell them? You definitely want to be around a lifeguard at all times, uh, even if you're just close to a lifeguard. And if you get in any trouble, uh, wave us down and we'll come out and help you. And then something that you mentioned is just to not underestimate the power of the ocean. Um, you've been around for quite a while. You've seen stuff like this before. Um, you know, if, if a parent was watching and their kids wanted to go out into the, the water, you know, during this time, what would you say? Uh, this is definitely not the time to do so. We got to be very careful. The ocean brings a lot of power, uh, rip currents, large surf. Uh, and these, these conditions are going to be around for the next couple of days and even possibly the next few weeks. Yeah, so something to uh, to certainly be aware of. Again, here's another live look uh, of Daytona Beach, uh, and you can see those uh, rough waves, eight to twelve feet. Some of those uh, those breakers that we're seeing, according to uh, Fox 35 Storm Team meteorologist Brooks Garner. Well, we still have a lot to get to on this uh, Fox 35 uh, News Plus, uh, so we are going to take a quick break, and we'll be back with uh, much more coverage. So keep it here on Fox Local.